they find you. Uh, please take these from me. I, they're from a friend of yours, and he's very, very worried about you, and I'm a little bit worried myself about being worried about your friend, being worried about you, being worried about this, and I want you to take it so I don't have to worry no more. Oh, thank you, but who? Bless me, a stranger here in Darkmere. Well now, that is a rare thing. A rare thing indeed. <laughs> and it seems to me, stranger, that you've got yourself into a spot of bother. Bother? What do you mean? I had nothing to do with that. Ah, for sure. But who'll believe you, hmm? But... Now, for the price of a dram, that'll be a coin in my tin to you. I could perhaps be of help. Well, yes, but... <sighs> well? I live in a world of darkness, as I'm sure you can tell. My world is a world of shadows, but sometimes shadows can reveal much. For one coin, I will tell you only this. A golden chain and hands unseen will help you find your taker. So tell me, why is this place known as Darkmere? I don't think so.
Tell me, stranger, have you not just come from the black waters below? Well, yes, but... I'm afraid that you still wear the cologne of petulance. The stench of those putrid waters will hang upon you for some time to come. But in answer to your question, this hamlet, this town, this would-be home of ours, was named in honor of that dark and malevolent mare that lies below and above which the very foundations of this place were laid. Thus, Dark Mirror. Now that was proper acting. Would you mind answering one more question? I can but try. How is it that we have a constant snowfall, and yet there's no chill in the air? The dry snow began to fall almost as soon as the Taker claimed its first victim. That seems a long time ago now. This once thriving haven for us lost souls is but a shadow of its former self. Taker? Who's the Taker? A soul Taker. A shadow child born of the four Dark Generals. For one reason or another, it has been summoned to Darkmere. It preys on the very souls of those who dwell here. But this soul taker cannot roam freely. It is a slave to the callers and must do their bidding. So, who summoned this... this soul taker? Nobody knows, and many dare not speak of it. Has no one ever tried to catch this thing? Young man, understand this. The soul taker is the worst kind of fiend. It thrives on darkness and shadow, moving in silence, taking the form of either brick or bush, and never seen nor heard until the last. But surely somebody did. The mayor does nothing. The jailer is as good as hopeless, and the council is made up of fools and deliberators. Ah, but if this creature could be unveiled, the fear that it feeds on would fade, and then at last, all will be well in Dark Mirror again. Well, I don't know about you, but I have a sneaky feeling that we are going hunting. Hmm, interesting. Evening, sir. Care for a drink? It's on the house for strangers, if you know what I mean. No, not for me, thank you. I'd like to keep a clear head. You sure now, sir? It's all good, strong stuff. No, no, no. But thank you anyway. There's only one spirit I want at the moment. Well, if you change your mind later, you know where I am. I say, you there, stranger, why don't you join me? I'm very worried about him, you know. You see, he does not himself of late. I can't put me finger on it, but there is something decidedly odd about him. Something odd? Something odd about who? Why, the mayor, of course. <coughs> you see, I've been with him for such a time. <coughs> now, I could swear I knew his every foible. <coughs> but just of late, well... <coughs> He's the 
soul taker. <sighs> you do realize, of course, that I'm innocent. I've only just arrived in Darkmere. How could I possibly be the soul taker creature? Interesting. You know, I had a feeling it was going to be you behind there. Oh, well, you know me, always the unlucky one. You see, I was chatting to some fellow in the tavern, you see. Well, now, he seemed like a nice enough chap, so I got a bit waffly. Well, that's not like me, as you well know. Well, next thing I oh, know, the jailer's arrived, cut me off, and this is where I ended up. He told me that the customers had threatened to burn the place down unless I was taken away. Where well, it's all bloody lies if you ask me, actually, that way, I've never did nothing. So, can you help me get out of here? Oh, you silly old fool, look at me. I can't even get myself out. Mind you, sailor boy, I will tell you this. Empty vessels make most noise. Well, that's at least what they said to me at the end before they carted me out, bought me over here, put me in prison, done what I'm doing now. I can't even eat my food. I go, well, my tongue's falling off anyway. I spy with my rotten eye something beginning with S. Oh, good grief. No, the answer is Sailor Boy. It's your turn. No, I'm not playing. Yet I spy with my rotten eye something beginning me. Shut up, I'm not playing. So you're ready for your last meal, are you? Well, be your goal then. How dare you, sir, to even offer such filth? and squirmies I smell. Arak, it's you. Arak it is. And once again you're all locked up. This is a bad thing. Yes, I know. Can you help? <laughs> ah, with wrigglies and crunchies and squirmies inside. <laughs> Perhaps Arak might be finding such helpfulness in other places. Oh. Ah, now I go, all filled up. But soon I will send some helpfulness. Thank you, Arak. Ah, no need for thankfuls. It's a gift. This is an order for your release, signed by the mayor. It seems that you have friends in high places. Friends in high places? What friends? Mr. Onegus, no less. The mayor's own advisor. 
Seems he persuaded his worship that you were a fine and respectable person. More a returner of souls than a taker, he says. So, you're free to go. Excellent. But first, I'm going to escort you to the mayor's chambers, where his worship wishes a private word in your shell, I... After you, Mr. Detective. Is it me? Or did one of the mayor's eyes just sink lower than the other? Oh, come in. It seems we've done you a great injustice, my good fellow. My dear friend and trusted advisor, Onegus here, tells me that you once found and returned his own soul intact. Is this true? It is, your worship. Onegus also tells me that you are a great solver of puzzles, a master of the enigma, and a finder of solutions. Is this also true? Well, I... Ah, uh, it is that, sir, your worship. I've seen it with my own eyes, and I've heard it with my own ears. A bit of a detective, I believe you might be calling him. In that case, Captain Briggs, I hereby bestow upon you the title, Detective of Dark Mirror. Yes, but, but well, you see, I... Ah, uh, a grand title, your worship. And what about an ice badge to go with it? And perhaps a map so that the young fella might find his way around without too much fuss. Oh, and he'll need a notepad and a pen to list all those clues now, won't he? Well, I... Excellent thinking, Onegus. Now, go, detective. You have the freedom of Dark Mirror. Solve these crimes and let the good folk rest easy. Well, I'm not really sure if I can, you, you see. Unless, of course, you would rather return to your cell. That can be arranged quite easily. Mr. Briggs, sir, there's been another one. It be the deputy mayor. He's been found behind the jail. His soul has been taken. Well, Detective Briggs, what are you waiting for? Your first case awaits, and there is no time to waste. Now go, and go quickly. Ah, well. It's always nice to know we have a choice in these matters, don't you think? Hmm, interesting. Poor, unfortunate soul. Mm, interesting. I need a key. It's locked. No. It's locked. I need a key. It's locked.
No sense, no theory. I don't think so. Actually, it's Mr. Not Miss. Oh? What? You can't be my sister. I haven't even got a sister. No, not sister. Mr. I'm a man. Tan, you say? That's never a tan. It's more like a beard to me. A bit unsightly for a girl of your age. Do you have any rubbing paper and some charcoal? What'd you say? Caper in a dark hole? Still looks like a beard to me. Anyway, what is it you're after, miss? I think I'll just take a look round. Why don't you have a look around, dear? You might see something you like. Hello? Excuse me? Hello? I say, madam? Hello, I say, madam? Hello? I say, madam? Oh, what is the point? I'll just take the damn things and be done with it. Hmm. Interesting. It's locked. I need a key. It's locked. Hmm, <laughs> interesting. Good day to you, sir. 
How may I be of service? I was wondering, do you make the shoes for all of the people of Darkmere? Each and every one, sir. Leastwise, all those who deserve them. All individual designs and all my own work. I pride myself on the fact that I can recall every pair of boots, shoes and sandals alike. And I've never had a pair return, sir. Well, in that case, you could be of help. I don't think so. Tell me, have you ever made any boots or shoes with this sign on the heel? Oh yes, I remember these all right. Four pairs I had to make, all different sizes and all with that odd sign on the heel. Must be the secret large. That's what I reckon. A secret lodge? Which secret lodge? Well, I don't know, do I? It's supposed to be a secret. Hmm. Interesting. Well, can you remember who ordered them? Ah, well now. That's where it all gets interesting, see? The order itself was actually handed to the old blind fellow who cages at the end of entry row. He, in turn, was told to give the order to one of the street urchins who then brought it to me. Strange thing, though. When the urchin brought the order to the shop, it felt as if he had somebody with him. I swear I could hear them breathing, but the lad was alone, all but his shadow. Ah, uh, so the old blind man had no idea who'd handed him the order for the boots? No, sir. All he could say for sure was that whoever it was had the smell of death and the smell of the paddock about him. Hmm. Interesting. Detective? Uh, I say, detective. We found another one. Can you hear me? Who's responsible for these terrible things? Well, it'll be that old soul taker, I figure. Ah, oh, well, that's that solved then. What you want here, stranger? I have nothing to say to you, nor any of your secret friends. What do you mean, secret friends? You all think I don't know what's going on, but I see. I see all even with me burnt out eyes. Oh yes, I see all. Now be gone from this place, and take your dark secrets with you. But I don't understand. I have no secrets, nor secret friends. I'm just trying to stop the Soul Taker and put an end to this horror. It's true, Father. He is no Soul Taker. The Mayor himself asked him for his help. The Mayor? What Mayor have we now? He hides away in his chambers. Rarely do we see him, and when he is to be seen, why, he covers up like some frightened leper. The Mayor has changed, I tell you, and not for the better. 
You said that you see all. What exactly did you mean by that? Perhaps you'd better be off. Talk to those two brothers. As thick as thieves they are, and as bad as Viper's Pit. Which two brothers? The Scourge brothers, of course. Danny and Billy. They keep the stable down away, and an old rabbit water boot. Now go. I've had me fill of ya. Well, anyway, thanks for your time. It was a big help. Hmm. Interesting. A big help. Hmm. Well, at least I think it was. It's locked. I need a key. It's locked. Sorry.
How many more, I wonder? For an age, it seems that this has been going on. One after another, they disappear. Souls taken. Bodies taken. I crossed them off my list, but no explanation. Where do they go, I ask? No, I dare not ask. For each time I do, I am told that it's just my job to keep a register, not to ask silly questions. Who is she, anyway, to talk to me in such a manner? Oh, bless. I think we'd better leave him to it. Don't you? Hmm. Interesting. It's locked. Well now, what can I do for you, sir? Uh, I'm not really sure. What sort of pies do you have? Well, the disc pies, sir. Yes, but what sort of pies? Meat pies, sir, and of the best quality, I can assure you. Well, I'm sure, but what type of meat? Well, it's just meat, sir. Just meat, you say? Um... Let me ask you, do you sell many pies? You know, I have a feeling I know the answer to this one. Well, no, sir, not as such. Fact is, I've never sold so much as one. Be honest, I can't even give them away. You mean you can't even give them away? Well, sir, every morning I set up my good and wholesome pies at the foot of the mayor's statue, just in case any poor lost soul should feel might peckish. Strange, though. Nobody ever takes one, so every afternoon I'll bring them all back into the shop and put them on display. So, uh, when did you actually make these pies? Well, that would have been when I first got here, you see. I seem to remember acquiring some meat from the old abattoir and making up a fresh batch. Mind you, how long ago that was I couldn't say. Not much call to keep track of time round here, really. I mean, it's not like we were ever likely to go anywhere else, now is it? Hang on a minute, you must be that detective fella. So, have you caught it yet? The taker, I mean. Uh, no. No, not yet. But I am working on it. Then may I offer some words of advice that may or may not be of help to you? Well, yes. Please do. Who do you know that likes to collect things, eh? There are those who aspire towards the ultimate goal, seven from limbo for one living soul. Now, I think it's best that you get on. You still have a soul taker to catch. Yes, of course, and thank you, madam. What a charming lady. And so helpful. Hmm, interesting.
He's not about. Urgent business with the mayor. Perhaps I could be of service, Mr. Detective. No, thank you. I'm just looking. Scourge is a name. Danny Scourge. Maybe you've heard of me. And my brother Billy. Ah, Scourge. Now you would be the brothers that own the abattoir and the stables, I believe. Neither of which are open, I've noticed. Well, there ain't much call for good quality meat round here. We just use it for storage nowadays. And the odd old knees up, you know what I mean. <laughs> So tell me, Mr. Scourge, do you or your brother ever let out the abattoir or stable to anybody? For storage purposes, I mean, of course. <coughs> oh, God, blow me nearly had my lungs up then! Well, I wouldn't know about that. My big brother takes care of all that sort of thing. I just sort of help him out here and there. Know what I mean? In fact, he says that I'm, um, uh, oh yeah, and an integral part of the business and says that what I don't know can't cause me no harm. And I'm sure he's right. So where is your brother today? He has urgent business with the mayor. Ah, I see. It must be very important business indeed. So how come you're not there? Well, someone's got to keep an eye on this place, ain't they? I mean, you never know who might come in. Hmm. Yes, of course. Well, I must bid you good day, Mr. Scourge, and thank you for your time. My pleasure, Mr. Detective. Now, you're sure nothing takes you fancy before you go? Well, not just at the moment, Mr. Scourge, but perhaps another time. Hmm. Interesting. Whoa. Well, either she can't spell, or she's trying to tell us something. Your business here, sir. I'd like to speak to the mayor. His worship is very busy and may not be disturbed. Ah, but I'm here on official business concerning the very capture of the Soul Taker. I must talk with the mayor and inform him of my progress thus far. Well, I don't have a real suspect yet, but what I do have is a theory. Oh, a theory, eh? Well, tell me more, my lad. Well, sir, I believe this to be the work of more than one person. In fact, I would go so far as to say a group of people. Four, at the very least. What? What's that you say? A cult? Well, nip it in the butt, man. Well, I didn't exactly say cult. 
Find the ringleaders, and the rest will come crawling from the woodwork. Well, off you go, detective. No time like the present. No time to lose. Hmm. Interesting. Excuse us, Mr. Mr. Detective. Detective. We're sorry to bother you. Especially as you are, obviously. In mid-sleuth. It's just that we thought it was best to... Introduce ourselves, you know. Make you aware of who we are and what it is we do. For these poor unfortunate... Individuals. individuals Mr. Mr. and, and Mrs. Mrs. Dugood at your, your service. service. Now look, monsters I can cope with. Demons I can handle. Savage, red-eyed hell dogs, bring them on. But bloody do-gooders, well, that's all I need. Let's get back to sleuthing, shall we? Well, it was nice to meet you both, but I really must get on. Absolutely, Detective. Off you go. And don't worry about him. We'll, we'll take, take good, good care, care of him. Of him. It's locked. Oh, hello there. Father wants to talk to you. He said he has something to tell you. Okay then, let's go and see him. Ah, but first tell me. Was it you who threw the snowball with the message inside? <laughs> My father wrote the message, but I made the snowball and I got you with the first shot. <laughs> well, come on then. Let's go and see your father. Well, according to my young friend here, you have something you'd like to tell me. I will not say much. For those that do, it seems they soon lose their souls. At the end of this day, out of sight of the eye, there is an unbeaten track. Find and walk this path. There you will make good and sound advice. Thank you, sir. I do appreciate your time. Now go. Time is running out for you and for the very soul of Darkmere.
Entrez-vous, Monsieur Detective. So, how did you know that it would be me at the door? Monsieur, am I not a mystic? Am I not most formidable at my job? Well, I hope so. You see, I was told that you could help me, but of course, you already knew that, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. So, can you help me find the soul taker? Mon Dieu, s'il vous plaît, monsieur, do not say those two words within this house. Shadows may seek even this place. Hey, come on. Give her a chance at least. So, what is it that you see? Monsieur Detective, I shall tell you. But only once. Look again at the wall. You may progress further. Left, right and center. Then on to the truth. Yes, but which wall? That is all I have for you, Monsieur. Bon chance and adieu. Merci, Madame. You have been most helpful. Au revoir. Hmm. Interesting. Detective? Ah, uh, ah, uh, say, Detective. We found another one. It's Mrs. Hudson. She must have been caught unawares while setting out her pies. Of all the folk in Darkmere, it had to be poor Mrs. Hudson. Help Dippity Dog, Mr. Briggs. I tell you, I never seen nothing like this in all my years in this here Darkmere. Is this exactly how you found the body? Yes, sir. Ain't touched nothing, sir. A cork. Mrs. Hudson's chef's hat. Hmm. A key. Is that a clue, Detective, sir? It may well be, my friend. It just may well be. Locked. Lock. Lock. Locked. Hmm. Interesting.
I don't think so. Hmm, interesting. Well, I need something to carry it in. Sorry, there's nothing happening. Sorry, there's nothing happening. Sorry, there's nothing happening. Sorry, sorry, there's nothing happening. Sorry, there's nothing happening. Sorry, there's nothing happening. Interesting. Excellent. Excellent. Interesting. What have they done to you? And why, for goodness sake? <coughs> Who are you, I wonder? If only you could speak. <coughs> oh, 
<laughs> Are you trying to tell me something? <laughs> ah, so this is your mayor, and you're being held prisoner. But why? <laughs> Um, I am a horse. No, 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 that can't be right. I love this horse. Hmm, interesting. Check on on bare face in here, and then do a little bit more business. <laughs> I have to go now, but I will get you out of here, I promise. Well, you might as well be getting off and grab yourself a flagon at the inn. I've no more need of you tonight, Danny boy. I'll see you out a bit later. I'm just gonna give them old nags of ours a nose bag, and then I'll probably join you up for a jar. <laughs> horses for courses, me old son. Horses for courses. Aha. Uh -huh. Of course. That's what the creature was trying to tell me. It's locked. Again, is it miss? Hmm. Now that's interesting. <sighs> Listen, I think you may have dropped these. I believe these are your spectacles. What? You come around for some more, you say? Huh. Don't think I've got any more. What is it again? No. These are your glasses. Oh, I beg your pardon. I'll have none of that language in this shop. These, are they yours? Now look, 
I've told you once. No. These are your glasses. All my life. I've been looking everywhere for them. Ah, now that is much better. Thank you very much, miss. And is there anything else I can do for you? No. Thank you, madam. You've done quite enough. Interesting. Interesting. It's locked.
This seems to be some type of crematorium. Whoa. The smell of burning flesh is very strong here. Well, at least we know now why the snow isn't cold, don't we? Well, I think we should get back to Darkmere and wind this case up. And if I'm right, we don't have much time until the Taker strikes again. And my guess is the Registrar is next. Jailer, I would like you to summon all of the good citizens of Darkmere to a meeting inside the Town Hall immediately. What, all of them, sir? Yes, Jailer, my good man. Every last one of them. But, sir... You may tell them that Detective Briggs is about to unveil the Soul Taker of Darkmere, and any that do not attend will be assumed as guilty as the Taker itself, and therefore punished as befits. Yes, sir, Detective, sir. Well, wish me luck. Question the snow. Now I've come far in this world, from the dungeons of Grunger to your very own Darkwing. But no matter how fantastic things have appeared, there has always been a reason and a rhyme for each of them. You see, there is no snow falling upon Darkwing. All that falls from this sky are the stark white remains of the burned and forgotten soulless ones. Let me explain, good folk of Darkwing. Who among you can remember when the so-called snow first began to fall? Does it not seem more than a coincidence that the snow began to fall as the first four victims also began to fall at the hands of the Soul Taker? And have you never asked yourself where the Taker came from and why here in Darkmere? A Soul Taker, as you may or may not know, is a malevolent shadow a shapeless, formless child, spawned the four dark genitals. But a soul taker is not free to roam the realms of limbo at will. No. A soul taker must be summoned, and a price must be paid for the summoning of such a creature. So, who would be prepared to perform such a rite? And more to the point, to what aims? Among the good people of Darkmere, there exists, shall we say, a secret society. Ah, but this is no charitable group of prominent citizens anonymously aiding the needy. No, this is an evil, greedy, corrupt society whose lust for wealth and power means that they will stop at nothing to get what they want. The society meet in the small hall at the end of Dagger Lane. It consists of four members one of which they consider the High Priest. Or perhaps I should say, Priestess. What do you think, Miss Blackley? Ah, uh, what? Ah, uh, of course, Miss Blackley. You can't hear me, can you? And I'm sure you can barely see me also. Mr. Scourge, how nice to see you. Ah, there he is. The landlord of the very aptly named Inn of Sins. A fine, upstanding citizen, as I'm sure you'll all agree. Take a good look at these people, ladies and gentlemen. These people that you know and recognize. Take a good look. For what I'm about to tell you will not sit well. Within this world that is neither here nor there, there is one thing that you all have in common. One thing left that you can at least treasure your own soul. Now, the Keeper has given each of you your own soul bottle, and it's up to you to keep it safe. Ah, but these souls are not just precious to you. There are those that collect and trade in the souls of others. With each stolen soul comes a little more power. Since my arrival in Darkmere, 
I have been given and found many clues. Some helpful, some not so helpful, but all relevant. I took a charcoal rubbing from the door at the end of Dagger Lane, and I took it to the shoemaker, who confirmed that he'd made four pairs of boots, all with the very same symbol on the heel. The design for the boots was handed to the blind beggar, who in turn took it to the shoemaker. The blind beggar stated that the messenger had the smell of death about him, also the smell of the fields, hay in fact. I do believe that Mr. Scourge here is the proud owner of an abattoir and a stable, two odors that would certainly match that description. I also found strands of hay on and around some of the victims. Miss Blackley. Ah, uh, yes. Of course, you're a little on the deaf side. Oh, and I see that you need to wear glasses. These I found at the scene of the crime. I recognized them because I'd seen Miss Blackley wearing them earlier. And then it struck me. Why would anyone so partially sighted go without her glasses? These, I believe, belong to you, Miss Blackley. You foolishly left them at the shoemaker's. You took them off, of course, enabled to look for the design with your perfectly good eyes. Now, the pair that you're wearing now, I took from the shop of Onegas. Let's face it, anybody who genuinely relies on spectacles will know immediately their own pair from another. What? Never heard so much rubbish in all my life. Heard, did you say, Miss Blackley? And without the aid of a trumpet. Now, for those of you who cannot see, this is a stopper, a plug, a cord. You will find these in any inn or tavern. Plug in the necks of those fine jugs of ale. A good landlord will always have a number of these about his person. Now this one I found on the ground next to the dear old fire lady. A lady, I might add, who offered up two significant pearls of wisdom. The first was a question. Who do you know that likes to collect things, she asked. The second, a simple but telling saying. There are those who aspire towards an ultimate goal, seven from limbo for one living soul. A note had been passed to me that led me to investigate the Inn of Sins. Now you may be surprised to learn that beneath the inn there is a secret passage. In one direction, the passage leads directly to a spot beneath the very meeting place of the secret society. But in the other, it leads directly beneath the statue of the mayor. There were no footprints beside the fire lady, because the soul taker's accomplice, on this occasion, only had to stretch out from the opening to retrieve the soul. But as he did so, something slipped from his pocket. Yours, I believe. And finally we come to my old friend Onegas. Onegas and I have crossed paths before. He's a collector, you know. He just loves to collect things. He has a special room. Oh, not here in Darkmare, but down in the lower echelons. That is where he keeps his collection, safe and away from prying eyes. I've been inside that room, and I've seen them. Row upon row of souls labeled and filed and ready for the highest bidder. You know, he once questioned me on the whereabouts of the safety of my own soul, my living soul. Now, where's yours, I wonder? Yes, sir. The Taker is here. It sits among us. Ladies and gentlemen, that poor featureless creature that you see there has for some time been a captive shackled and chained, locked in the stables, far away from the public eye. As you can see, the flesh from his face has been carefully removed, perhaps by an expert slaughterman. Ladies and gentlemen, this poor faceless creature is none other than your very own mayor.
Ladies and gentlemen, I give you your soul taker. price to pay when summoning and meddling with the great powers of darkness, as our four conspiring friends have discovered. People of Darkmere, the Soul Taker has been banished. Your mayor has been returned. Where are you going? Are you leaving us? Yes, I'm afraid I probably am. My father said, but thanks to you, the snow has stopped. Who do you think you are throwing your weight around like this? Okay, I get the message.